Imagine a gamble so daring, so audacious, it could change the course of history. A band of rugged conquistadors, outnumbered by a million men, stare down the face of an empire that dwarfed their own. This is the story of Hernán Cortés, a man who defied logic and fate, a man who dared to burn his own ships and plunge headlong into the heart of the Aztec Empire. The year is 1519. Cortés, a young conquistador hungry for glory and gold, lands on the shores of Mexico. He dreams of riches, of carving out a kingdom for himself in this unknown land. But the Aztecs, a civilization older than Rome itself, stand in his way. Glittering temples pierce the sky, their plazas teeming with warriors clad in feathers and obsidian blades. Cortes knew he couldn't win alone. He forged alliances with rival tribes, promises of freedom whispering in the ears of those chafing under the Aztec yoke. But even with their help, the road to Tenochtitlan, the Aztec capital, was a gauntlet of blood and steel. Then came the fateful night. The Noche Triste, a night etched in history. Driven from Tenochtitlan, defeated and demoralized, Cortes faced a mutiny within his own ranks. His men, their faces etched with despair, whispered of retreat, of abandoning this mad dream. But Cortes, fueled by an unyielding ambition, made his audacious move. He gathered his men, his voice ringing out like a clarion call. With a flourish of his sword, he issued his command, burn the ships. No turning back, no escape. Cortes had just severed his lifeline, condemning himself and his men to a one-way journey into the heart of the Aztec Empire. Was it madness or the ultimate act of leadership? A desperate gamble that would forever alter the fate of two civilizations. This is the story of a man who gambled everything. This is the story of Cortes, the conquistador who dared to risk it all to conquer an empire. But was this audacious gamble madness or genius? To try and answer this, we need to better understand the man. Let's journey to his origins, to the remote mountainous land of Extremadura in Spain. Spain, the land that birthed Hernán Cortés in 1485. A land of stark beauty and unwavering spirit. A land that would sculpt the ambition and restlessness that would drive Cortés across the ocean and into the heart of history. Even as a child, Cortés craved adventure. He dreamt of grand deeds and faraway lands, a stark contrast to the quiet life of a nobleman's son. His education at Salamanca University merely fueled his fire, the stories of Greek heroes and Roman conquerors whispering promises of a destiny beyond the sheep-dotted hills of Extremadura. But life as a noble wasn't enough for Cortes. He hungered for more, his ambitious spirit clashing with the expectations of his family. Legal troubles and a yearning for action shadowed his university days. Soon expelled and ostracized, he saw not shame, but liberation. In 1504, at the tender age of 19, Cortes turned his back on Spain, drawn by the siren song of the newly discovered Americas. He set sail for Hispaniola, the Spanish crown's glittering jewel in the Caribbean, lured by tales of new world riches and adventure. This was just the beginning, the first step on a journey that would change the course of history. This was Hernán Cortés, a young man on the cusp of destiny, fueled by a restless spirit and the insatiable hunger for a life beyond the horizon. In 1504, at the tender age of 19, Cortés landed in Hispaniola, the jewel of the Spanish crown in the Caribbean. Hunger gnawed at him, not for food, but for glory. He clawed his way up the ranks, ambition a double-edged sword, earning both envy and grudging respect. Under the iron fist of Diego Velázquez, the governor, he honed his military skills, his ruthless efficiency in battle, whispering promises of future conquests. 
But beneath the surface, ambition coiled like a viper. Whispers of a golden empire beckoned from the mainland, tantalizing promises whispered on the wind. His rivalry with Velázquez deepened, a storm brewing beneath the veneer of cordiality. Marriage to Catalina Suárez, Velázquez's niece, secured Cortés's social standing, yet it was a calculated move, a mask for his growing defiance. Catalina, a woman as fiercely ambitious as she was intelligent, became his silent partner in the game of power. In 1518, defying Velázquez's orders, Cortés set about a clandestine scheme. Ships were discreetly gathered, horses smuggled from Cuba, and supplies stockpiled under the cover of night. Whispers of rebellion slithered through the ranks, but Cortés, his gaze fixed on the distant horizon, held them firm. He enlisted the support of disgruntled soldiers, lured by promises of riches and glory, and meticulously planned his expedition. The journey was a crucible. Hurricanes lashed the ships, tossing them like toys in a giant's bathtub. Fear and disease stalked the decks, claiming lives as easily as the salt spray claimed hair. Mutiny lurked in the shadows, a serpent waiting to strike. But Cortés, his vision of golden cities undimmed, rallied his men. He shared their hardships, offered words of encouragement, and punished dissent with a ruthless efficiency that chilled even the most hardened conquistadors. After a treacherous voyage of months, Cortés stepped onto the sandy shores of Veracruz in 1519. The whispers of golden kingdoms had morphed into reality. Here, on the cusp of the mighty Aztec Empire, the seed of ambition, planted and nurtured through years of struggle, stood poised to blossom. The conquest of Mexico beckoned, a tapestry woven with the threads of Cortés's audacity, fueled by a hunger for glory that would change the course of history. This is just the beginning of an epic saga. Next, we delve deeper into the life and conquests of Hernán Cortés, exploring the clash of cultures, the brutal battles, and the enduring legacy of the man who dared to defy an empire. In 1519, after a treacherous voyage, Cortés set foot on the Mexican shores of Veracruz. Veracruz, with its humid jungles and vibrant flora, greeted them with a stark contrast to their dry Spanish homeland. A new chapter had begun, with whispers of an Aztec empire holding the promise of unimaginable riches and power. But the path ahead was riddled with thorns, alliances to be forged, battles to be fought, and a destiny waiting to be claimed. These were the Maya, the first glimpse of a civilization unlike any Cortés had ever imagined. Their complex language, their intricate customs, and their fierce independence were far removed from the familiar world of Europe. But Cortés, ever the strategist, knew communication was key. Fate intervened in the form of a young woman named Malinche. Captured by the Maya, she spoke their language and a smattering of Spanish, a bridge between two worlds. With Malinche by his side, Cortés learned about the Maya and their fear of a mighty empire to the north, the Aztecs. He saw an opportunity, a chance to play this fractured world against itself. However, these initial victories came at a cost. Disease and exhaustion gnawed at the Spanish. Cortés needed a secure base, a foothold in this strange new land. And so, Cortés chose Veracruz. He set about building a town, Villarica, a symbol of Spanish defiance and a launch pad for the ultimate prize, Tenochtitlan, the heart of the Aztec Empire. With their feet firmly planted on Mexican soil, Cortés and his men had taken the first steps on a path that would forever alter the fate of two empires. The next chapter would involve alliances, betrayals, and a deadly gamble that would either crown Cortés a king or leave him buried in the ashes of his own ambition. Cortés found himself amidst a political tapestry far more intricate than he could have imagined. 
Mesoamerica was a cauldron of rivalries, with kingdoms and city-states locked in a complex web of alliances and enmities. The mighty Aztec Empire, with its capital Tenochtitlan, held dominion over much of the region. Their fearsome warriors and ruthless taxation inspired both awe and resentment among their subjects. But simmering beneath the Aztec dominance was a simmering discontent. The Tlaxcalans, fierce and independent, had long resisted Aztec rule. In their eyes, Cortés and his conquistadors presented a potential weapon, a chance to tip the balance of power. Through Malinche, Cortés exploited these simmering tensions. He promised the Tlaxcalans freedom from Aztec tyranny, his words dripping with honeyed diplomacy. And so, an alliance was forged. Tlaxcalan warriors hardened by years of fighting Aztecs bolstered the Spanish ranks. Their knowledge of the land and local tactics proved invaluable, turning the tide in bloody battles. But every alliance comes at a cost. Tlaxcalan resentment towards the Aztecs fueled their support for Cortes, but their acceptance of the Spanish was far from unconditional. Fear and opportunism danced a delicate tango under the banner of mutual aid. With each Tlaxcalan warrior at his side, with each supply train laden with food and provisions, Cortés's path towards Tenochtitlan grew clearer. But the question remained, could this fragile alliance of convenience weather the storm that lay ahead? With their alliance secured, Cortés set his sights on the Aztec capital, Tenochtitlan. The journey promised riches and glory, but the path was fraught with peril. Dusty roads, treacherous mountain passes, hostile natives, ambushes in the jungle. The conquistadors struggle with hunger, disease and fatigue. Days bled into weeks, the landscape a relentless enemy. Disease lurked in the shadows, claiming both Spanish and Tlaxcalan lives. Ambushes from Aztec sympathizers tested their resolve, whispers of doubt slithering through the ranks. Finally, shimmering on the distant lake, rose the jewel of the Aztec Empire, Tenochtitlan. Its towering temples, bustling markets, and intricate canals filled the conquistadors with awe and a chilling fear. Cortés and Moctezuma meet initially with smiles and gifts, but tension hangs heavy in the air. Their cultural differences are stark, a gulf of suspicion simmering beneath the surface. Moctezuma, the Aztec emperor, received Cortés with outward cordiality, but beneath the facade, fear and resentment festered. Moctezuma saw the Spaniards not as guests, but as potential predators. A misunderstanding, a spark in the tinderbox of tension, ignited a massacre. The great temple became a battleground, the echoes of screams and clashing steel resounding through the city. Panicked Spanish soldiers retreat through the crowded streets, pursued by enraged Aztec warriors. The city is consumed by chaos, the dream of conquest turning into a desperate fight for survival. The Noche Triste, the sad night, descended upon Tenochtitlan. Battered, demoralized and hunted, Cortes led his men across the causeway under a hail of arrows and obsidian blades. The scene is brutal and chaotic, highlighting the heavy losses and near annihilation of the Spanish forces. Cortés, bloodied and wounded, emerges from the carnage, his eyes burning with a desperate resolve. Tenochtitlan, once a shimmering mirage of gold and glory, had become a graveyard of ambition. Battered and broken, the conquistadors had tasted defeat, facing a difficult choice. Retreat and lick their wounds, or return and conquer the heart of the Aztec Empire, knowing full well the deadly price it might exact. From the ashes of the Noche Triste arose a steely resolve. In Tlaxcala, Cortés regrouped, licking his wounds and reforging his shattered ambition. He rallied his remaining men, their fear tempered by a thirst for vengeance. Cortés addresses a gathering of Tlaxcalan leaders, promising riches and freedom in exchange for renewed support. Faces flicker with doubt, but whispers of Aztec tyranny tip the scales. 
He secured new allies, exploiting Tlaxcalan resentment and promises of Aztec downfall. Together, they devised a new strategy, one that would exploit Tenochtitlan's greatest weakness, its location on an island. Brigantines, nimble warships, became the key to Cortez's plan. With this new naval force, he could control the lake, severing Tenochtitlan's supply lines and choking the city into submission. Bombardments rain down on the city. Spanish and Tlaxcalan forces clash with Aztec warriors on causeways. Hunger gnaws at the besieged defenders. The siege of Tenochtitlan was a crucible of suffering. Days bled into weeks, the screams of battle and the moans of the dying echoing through the canals. Disease, an unseen enemy, entered the fray. Smallpox ravaging the weakened Aztec population. Smallpox had a horrifying impact on the Aztecs. Bodies began piling up in the streets and despair crept into the eyes of even the fiercest Aztec warriors. The once bustling city became a ghost town, shrouded in death and desperation. Yet Aztec resistance remained, fueled by Cuauhtémoc, the last emperor, who rallied his people with defiance. Cortés lead a final assault, brigantines flanking his forces on the lake. The scene is one of chaotic desperation, the final act of a deadly ballet. On August 13, 1521, the end came. Cuauhtémoc was captured, the Aztec Empire shattered. Tenochtitlan, the glittering heart of Mesoamerica, lay in ruins, a testament to the brutality and audacity of Cortés's conquest. The fall of Tenochtitlan marked the end of an era and the beginning of another. The Aztec Empire, once a beacon of power, was no more. In its place rose the Spanish colony of New Spain, a testament to Cortés's ambition and the brutal cost of conquest. Hernán Cortés, the conquistador who toppled an empire, stood now as governor of New Spain. The ruins of Tenochtitlan served as the foundation for a new city, a Spanish phoenix rising from the ashes of Aztec glory. The task of rebuilding was monumental. Cortés established Spanish institutions, introduced Catholicism, and attempted to integrate the remnants of Aztec society into the colonial framework. But beneath the veneer of progress, tensions simmered. The brutal conquest left deep scars and resentment festered among the subjugated indigenous populations. Cortés, ruthless even in governance, imposed forced labor and heavy taxes, fueling accusations of exploitation and cruelty. The debate over Cortés's legacy remains contentious. He was a visionary leader, bringing unity and stability to a fractured region. Yet, his methods were stained with blood his ambition often eclipsing empathy for the conquered. In 1547, in his secluded Spanish estate, Hernán Cortés breathed his last. He died from a case of pleurisy at the age of 62. He died a wealthy man, a marquis, a legend. But the echoes of his conquest, the whispers of cruelty and triumph, would continue to reverberate across centuries, a testament to the complex and controversial life of a man who dared to defy empires. Hernán Cortés, a name etched in history, a conquistador whose daring ambition shattered empires and reshaped the world. Five centuries later, his shadow still stretches across the Americas, whispering in the wind through Mayan ruins, echoing in the language we speak, present in the faces we see. His conquest triggered a wave of colonization, reshaping the political landscape of the Americas. European diseases ravaged native populations, leaving deep scars on communities forever. Yet, the encounter wasn't just one-sided. New crops, technologies, and cultural exchanges irrevocably altered the course of history, weaving a complex tapestry of shared influences. But was Cortés a hero or a villain? a visionary leader, or a ruthless conqueror? The question haunts us still. 
His ruthless methods stain his achievements, leaving us grappling with the ethical complexities of conquest and the devastating consequences for those who bore the brunt of his ambition. Perhaps the true legacy of Cortés isn't just a tale of triumph or tragedy, but a poignant reminder of the dangers of unchecked ambition, the imperative of intercultural understanding, and the ongoing struggle for justice and equality in a world forever marked by this encounter.